now, coming to you live from the math department, Precalculus Math 10. Dance. 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 Today, section 1.3, relating the metric for SI system and imperial Now, right off the bat, I just want to point out that the proper name for the metric system is actually SI, which stands for Système International Genité. And you'll often see the metric measurements labeled on wrenches or wherever. You'll see them labeled as being SI units. Um, so just so you know what that means. Now we've already looked at how to convert units of length within the imperial system and hopefully you already know how to do basic conversions within the metric system. Just move the decimal to the left or to the right depending on which units you're switching from and move it the appropriate number of places. But what about converting from metric to imperial or the other way around? Unfortunately, there are no simple conversions here. There's nothing like 10 centimeters is equal to 3 inches. That'd be lovely, but doesn't exist. But there are some specific conversion rates that we can use. And you can find the chart that I've got here on the screen. I've posted it in Canvas for you. You can also find it in your textbook uh, and even online. I'm sure you could get it. And that way you don't have to copy this whole thing out. You can just print it off uh, or download it from any of those places. Okay? These conversion rates will also be given to you uh, on a formula sheet. So while it's maybe easy to remember some of them, you really needn't worry about memorizing all of them. So let's take a look at an example now, converting from imperial over to metric. For instance, I'm approximately 6 foot 3 inches tall, but how many centimeters is that? Well, a good thing to do first of all would be to just do a quick estimate. If you look at a ruler, a standard ruler, you can see that 12 inches, or 1 foot, is pretty close to 30 centimeters. Not exactly the same, but, but close. So knowing that I'm over 6 feet tall means that I'm going to be over 180 centimeters since each foot is roughly 30 centimeters, 6 times 30. So. In my conversion, if I get an answer that's significantly more or less than 180 centimeters, that's my cue to double check and maybe try again. Maybe I multiplied wrong somewhere. So to convert the units, the first thing that we need to do is turn 6 foot 3 inches into either all inches or all feet. And it's probably easier to say all inches, because otherwise you'll end up with a decimal number for the feet. So if we go 6 times 12, that's 72 inches plus the 3 inches we already have. 72 plus 3 makes 75 inches. And now we can convert 75 inches into centimeters by using the appropriate reference that we have in the chart. It says in the chart that 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. We're going to use this to make a ratio that we will multiply with the 75 inches. Since every 1 inch is the same as 2.54 centimeters and every 2.54 centimeters is the same as 1 inch, we could either say 1 inch over 2.54 centimeters or 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch. Both of those are proper ratios, but how do we decide which one to use? Well, the key is you use the ratio where the units that you want to end up in are in the top, in the numerator. We want our final answer to be in centimeters. We want to get rid of inches, so we're going to multiply by the ratio 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch. Remember when you have something the same in the top and the bottom of a fraction? They, they cancel out, right? 5 over 5 cancels out, becomes 1. The same is true here with the units. When we have inches on the top and inches on the bottom, they cancel out, and the only unit that we're left with is centimeters. So we can multiply 75 times 2.54 getting 190.5 centimeters which is in line with the original estimate. So let's state very carefully, very clearly, the method for converting from one unit of measurement to another. If your starting measurement is in mixed units, for example, feet and in inches, or yards, feet and in inches, then you need to convert it all into one unit first. I usually recommend going to the smallest one, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. Step two, multiply your given measurement 
by a ratio that's comprised of the comparison between the units you're working with, right? If you want to go from feet to meters, use a ratio that compares feet with meters. Don't use something that does miles to kilometers because that's different things. Now be sure that the ratio you're using has the units that you want to convert into on the top of the fraction and the units that you want to get rid of have to go in the bottom of the fraction. They will cancel with the units on your starting value. And at this point in time, multiply your first measurement by that ratio. There might be some division in there, so do that too. But multiply and divide appropriately and then round off appropriately. In science, you'll talk very specifically about significant figures, and I'm going to leave that discussion for science class. But just recognize that if your original measurement only had one decimal place, then it's probably not reasonable for your converted measurement to have seven, eight, or nine decimal places, right? Be as accurate in your final response as the initial information you had in the first place. Let's look at one more example here and then I'll let you go. Let's convert 88 kilograms into pounds. So again, go back and look at the conversion chart. You can see on the chart that one pound is approximately equal to 0 0.454 kilograms. So we're going to make a ratio out of that. One pound over 0.454 or 0.454 over one pound. Again, remember, we're starting with 88 kilograms. We want to end up in pounds, so we need to multiply so that pounds are on the top. So one pound over 0 0.454 kgs. This makes the kgs cancel out. Now we just need to multiply this. It's 88 times 1 and then divided by 0 0.454. Right? 88 times 1 is 88, so it's 88 over 0 0.454 uh, pounds. So let's get over to a calculator and see what is 88 divided by 0.454. Just move my calculator over here out of the way a little bit. 88 divided by 0.454 equals 193.832. This is where I said how many decimal places are appropriate? Well the initial thing in kilograms didn't have any decimal places so I maybe don't want to keep any decimal places here. Let's do this to the nearest pound. So we're looking at approximately 194 pounds. That's some good converting. All right, we're coming up to the end. That's what that song means. It's time for two for two you. For you. Convert 105 centimeters into feet and inches, rounded to the nearest inch, and a motorcycle and a rider with combined mass of 450 kilograms. Hmm. I wonder if they'll make it safely across the beam. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. So until next time, keep your pencils sharp, and I'll see you in class.